I screwed it up. Go ahead. You. You. Ah. You, you. Yes, you. You, lady. <laughs> the, the cute one in the back. <laughs> this is the Your Mac Life show number 1052 for this Wednesday, the 10th of June, 2015. Welcome. And thank you for joining us. We'll be discussing the WWDC <laughs> for you interested people and amateur cooking tools. Uh, so without further ado, let's get it done with your host and mine, Mr. Sean King. Hey, folks. <laughs> your host? <laughs> did, did you mention we're going to be talking to Jim Dalper of The Loop? <gasps> we will. Uh, Jim had uh, the beer bash on, um, was it Monday night? I think it was Monday night. Uh, so we'll talk to him about that. Talk, he was at the keynotes. We'll talk to him about the keynote. We'll talk to him about his thoughts about what Apple announced. What did we do this weekend? Uh, b- by the way, I hope you all had a good weekend, a good week. Uh, what did we do oh, this weekend? Oh, that's right, uh, the tour guys. Yes, tourists. On, on, uh, this is something I encourage all you guys to do if you can. On Saturday, um... We, wrong button. Try this one. On Saturday, we went to a, uh, this website called tourguys.ca. And they do these tours in um, Vancouver and Toronto, the only cities in Canada where, where they have the tour so far. And what it is is a walking tour of a certain section of your city. It's in Vancouver, uh, the popular areas are a place called Granville Island, a uh, Chinatown. I think it's the second largest chi- Chinatown on the West Coast and maybe the third or fourth largest Chinatown in the world. Sorry, North America. And uh, then they have a waterfront one. And Kim and I and a bunch of our photography friends in our meetup group went to the uh, Granville Street and Gastown section. Gastown is, for those folks who aren't familiar with Vancouver, is the oldest section of the city. And it's also very small, so it was an e- it was easy, easy walk. Although we still walked about five kilometers that day. Yep. It's not bad. But it was really interesting. Uh, if you go to our website uh, or go to, go to our YouTube site and do search for Tour Guys or search for Your Mac Life, I post a little video of our, our one cute little uh, uh, tour guide, Lenny, who was a font of information. I've lived in Vancouver on and off for 20 years, and I'm not a buff of the history of Vancouver, but the area we'd walked in, Gastown, I've walked – a billion times. It's a really, in college, it was a bunch of bars down there that we loved going to in college. And whenever friends come to town, I always take them to Gastown because it's, it's a fun little kitschy kind of shopping district. And she pointed out things that I'd seen in Gastown, but I had no idea what they actually were or, or, or cared about. She was really interesting. Uh, there's only one question that she that I, that I asked before she even answered, uh, told us about it, and she knew the answer, which is always a sign of a good tour guide. It wasn't something esoteric either. It wasn't like something really t- trying to stump the tour guide kind of thing. It was a fairly obvious thing, but something I didn't know anything about. Uh, we started off at the Vancouver Art Gallery, which is a beautiful art gallery, and I knew that it was at one point City Hall and the, and the law courts, but she had a great story about why the City Hall of Vancouver is now where it is, which is nowhere near downtown. Most cities, the, 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 your City Hall, is somewhere in the downtown area, but it's not in, in Vancouver. It's way outside of the downtown area. So it was really interesting. I got some good pictures. Uh, like I said, I posted a video of, of Lenny singing a, a song about the, was it the Grand Hotel? Yes. You can see Kim in the background making faces at her. Yeah, I was like, woo. Why are you making faces at her? Because I do that all the time. Okay, all right. Just, just checking. It's a habit. Uh, but it was fun. It was, it was a good time. If you get a chance... Uh, what other tours have you taken in cities? You're, you are a world traveler. Have you taken other either walking tours or that kind of stuff? When you go to a new city, do you take a, an no. organized tour? or do you I just do sort it myself. Do yourself, yeah? I just wander. Yeah. You want me to talk more so when, you can when, swallow? When, when I do this, <laughs> you, you keep talking, yes. Well, yeah. see, the reason I ask is that I, 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 yeah, I'm, not a, I'm not an organized tour guy. Get on the bus, all 30 of you go that way. But I do like doing these kind of small-scale organized uh, tours, at least the first day of a trip, because then I kind of know a little bit about the city. I, I've read a lot, generally. When, when I go to a place, I, I read quite a bit about it. But it's always great to hear from someone who lives there or knows the area. Um, so I've done Segway tours, which are fun. If you get a chance to ride a Segway. I'd fall off. You, you think you would, but you wouldn't. <laughs> you, you, yeah, you do think you would, but you, you actually they're actually very, very stable. The problem with Segways is you look like a complete dork. Mm-hmm. There's no way to not look like a dork. You wear a little dork helmet, 
and you're standing in these two dorky wheels holding this dorky steering wheel. And the taller you are, the dorky you are. So I'm 6'3", I'm like 7 feet, the top, I'm the 7 foot dork, just going all around town. But it's, it's cool. The problem with Segways, though, is you don't realize it, depending on, on the length of the tour, it's between generally an hour and a half to almost three hours. San Antonio, we took the tour, it was three hours. You're standing still for three hours. You don't realize that. You're standing for three hours. So your legs get sore. Your, mm. your feet get sore. So wear, a couple, wear the same comfortable shoes you would if you were walking. I also really like the hop-on, hop-off bus tour things. And those are a lot of fun if you go to a, a foreign city and those things are offered. Because what they what you, they do is they're generally in the core of the touristy area of the city. So it takes you to all the, the places that you want to go. We've done them in London, in Paris, in Rome, in New York. But it also, we also use it as like a little taxi cab, too. Because you pay 35 40 bucks for the hop-on, hop-on bus for a day or two days, and that's your taxi. You just get on it to go to, you know, the Buckingham Palace and the British Museum and then, and then uh, the Tower of London and all those places that you want to get to as a tourist. The hop-on, 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 hop-off bus thing is kind of neat. And they have tour guides that, you know, generally are fairly knowledgeable about the area, which are, I, I really like. Um, so, yeah, you're, you're not a tour guide type, type person? No. What cities have you gone to tourist-wise that uh, you would not take a tour? Wellington, Auckland, New Wellington? Zealand. Wellington? What the hell's in Wellington? The Beehive. They're, that's an interesting sorry, building. what? <laughs> the Beehive. That's their government building. It's called be- the Beehive. The Beehive, because oh, okay. it looks like a beehive. It's right. interesting architecture. Um, where else have I been? Singapore. You didn't take a tour of Singapore? No. Nope. Walked. No? Did a lot of walking. Is there anything touristy in Singapore? There's not a lot of what we think of as world history in Singapore. No. No, it's just very clean. Yeah. Very clean. Yes. It, 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 it's Spotlessly clean. clean. So when you go to Australia in February, will you, will you won't do any touristy things? No, my sister lives there. She can show me everything that's of interest. That's what I'm saying. But you, yeah. So you will do touristy stuff? Uh, maybe. I'd like to see a koala. <laughs> <laughs> That's about it. A kangaroo? Yeah, maybe. A wombat? Yeah. An emu? I'm actually, when I go to Australia, this is, I'm actually excited because wombat reminded me. I'm going to meet a school friend from when I was seven to ten years old. Yeah, six to ten. I went to school with this guy and he now lives and is a friend of my older sister and her husband wait, wait, wait. in Australia. You went to school in Coventry, England. Yeah, I know. That's why it's so cool. Kevin Willisey. Yeah. And he, he, met, he met my sister at a coffee shop, and they got talking. And because he's from England, and she's originally from England, then he said, oh, what's your maiden name? And he goes, I used to go to school with a Kim. <laughs> it was so funny. That is weird. So yeah. That's cool. I'm looking forward to meeting him. Now, Monty, him Monty in the IRC chat room says, uh, I'd rather see the non-tourist parts of almost any place I visit. There's usually mm-hmm. less people. I think it depends on where you're going. Like Singapore, yeah, I would definitely go to the non-tourist type place because Singapore is mostly known for like a lot of shopping. Mm-hmm. But I think for a lot of places, you at least have to make the attempt to go. I mean, you can't go to Rome and not go to the tourist places because the tourist places are the places of history, of art, of uh, fashion. If you're in Milan, you have to go to those places. If you went to Rome and didn't see the Colosseum, well, that's just stupid. Well, why, why? Then you might as well go to Rome, mm-hmm. Indiana. So I think you have to. I think if you want fewer people, just go different times of the year. Yeah. If you want fewer people, just don't go in July and August of these of these kind of places in in the summertime. And anyone who goes to Europe in general in July and August as a tourist, you're crazy because a lot of those places almost shut down. Less so the touristy type places because they know that's when the tourists are coming, but they're also packed. When we went to Italy, we went in mid October. It was great. Weather was wonderful. It was mild. Uh, very temperate climate, and there was very, very few tourists. When we were in Santorini, Greece, on the cruise, um, I asked somebody about – Santorini is just spectacularly beautiful. I asked somebody, I said, because they're very, very narrow streets in the main the main town, I said, this must get really crazy in the summertime. And the guy pointed to the water, which is down in the caldera of the, the volcano. He said, you see your ship there? And there was, there was our cruise ship down there in the caldera. He said – I said, yeah. He said, imagine 15 of those things just in that one space. 
and water taxis going constantly back and forth. And then imagine this as the worst traffic jam ever. He said, we in Santorini hate tourist season. We like it when there's one cruise ship that comes into town, not when 15 cruise ships are coming into town. So, yeah, I, I definitely wouldn't. Uh, I, I wouldn't. Unless I was forced to for whatever reason, I wouldn't go to any place that was really touristy during tourist season. I certainly avoid it. I don't know if we should stop with this. Yeah, we'll talk about this now. Um, so, for some reason, my small caveman brain thought it would be kind of interesting to watch the WWDC keynote with Kim last night. Uh, downloaded it from... from <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you weren't exactly, um, shall we say, a fan of it. Why not? What was... It, was, it, was, it wasn't that bad. It seriously wasn't that bad. But you it was weren't, just... You, it just uh, I don't know when they start talking geek and about developing apps and the techno language that they use for, you know, graphics and all that. That's fine. The videos not, were cool. Not what I'm into. Do you, do you like the videos? Which videos? Well, they showed a video one one video about, uh, about the app developers. Um, how, it's thing. cool how it's grown and what they've done. Yeah, it is. It's awesome, and it's good that Apple support them in creating all the things they do. Mosquito. It wasn't riveting. There was stuff, then there was more stuff. Mm -hmm. And it was two and a half hours long. It was definitely definitely long. Yeah. Uh, a lo longer than what Apple usually does. But it, and and Apple Pay. Why the hell? England before Canada. Well. We're so close. <laughs> <laughs> Distance has nothing to do with it. It's all about commerce. It's yeah. all about who makes the most money, who has the most people. Mm. And one of the issues is Canada's banking system, for better or worse, during the financial crisis, better, is notoriously conservative. Very, very conservative. We don't, they don't do anything unless it's been tested to death. Mm. And they don't take risks at all, which is good because, like I said, we were less affected bank wise. That's probably why on the little blurb they put up about the banks that were um, cooperating with this mm -hmm. in England, I didn't see Barclays. Is Barclays, Barclays conservative? Very conservative. Yeah. yeah. So that's why it's not yet available in Canada. When Apple Pay was first announced, the, the, the CEO of TD Bank said, yeah, that's not coming to Canada for another year. Now, it's not because of Apple. Believe me, Apple wants Apple Pay. Mm -hmm. Merchants want Apple Pay. It's the guy in the middle, the banks, that are going to be dragging their feet on this, at least in Canada. Um, I, the, the thing with me is, while Apple Pay is, is cool and interesting, I don't know that we need Apple Pay. I mean, how hard is it right now to pay for stuff? It's easy. The issue with Apple Pay that all folks don't get is that it's about security. And not about convenience. It's, it's not that hard to pull out your wallet and pull out your credit card. Especially here in Canada, we have, a lot of places have that, uh, not only do we have the chip and pin, but we have the tap thing where they hand you the little terminal and you literally just tap your credit card on it. It's very similar to the way Apple Pay works. So you tap your credit card and boom, there's no pin number, there's no anything else to be done. So there's not a lot of need for it um, here in, in Canada. Uh, Brian Monroe, you do need Apple Pay. It's fun. Well, you know what? Uh, spending money is already fun for me. I don't. I don't. I don't need other, other ways to make it fun. So we're talking about that. Oh, by the way, we're also be talking about later on in the show this thing, and why I'm carrying it, and why it's so freaking heavy. That and more. We're up next. We're going to talk to our good friend Jim Downpool of the Loop at uh, loopinsight.com about his impressions of the Worldwide Developer Conference and uh, the alt bash that he put on on the, uh, I think it was last night he did the alt bash, or the night before, one of the two. All that and much more coming up. This is your Mac Life.
Welcome back, folks. This is Your Mac Life. I am Sean King, joined by our friends at Jim Downpour in the Loop at loopinsight.com. Jim, how you doing? Doing good, Sean. How are you? I am good. We had that problem with the audio again. Uh, let me turn your audio up again. Uh, do that again. How you doing? I'm doing good. That's so strange. Why is your audio so weirdly low when it hasn't been in the past? You know, I think it might be a problem with this mixing board. I don't know the folks at Yamaha have said they're going to send me a new one, so maybe I'll... Uh, I'll get it fixed there. So uh, when, I, I keep getting this wrong. When was the old bash? Last night. It was last night. Oh, okay. No, Monday. Monday night. Monday, Monday night. night. Okay, that's what I thought. Uh, I got to assume it was a big success. I, I, I saw a bunch of tweets about it. I saw pictures of you. It looked like it was a it was a good time had by all. I I certainly had a great time. Do, do how much of it do you remember? I remember getting there. <laughs> Did they no, run it? Was it was a. Uh, it was a great time. Did they run out of Heineken? No. Anytime they don't run out of Heineken no. is a good time for you. No, and actually, um, and we didn't run out of Heineken because it wasn't drank. We actually went over our allotted amount. They just kept pouring. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good to hear. Because we we all know I, uh, how, we all know how grumpy you get when a bar runs out of Heineken. You get you turn into a real no. biatch. I can, yeah, <laughs> you but really do. I I up. I upped the amount this year that I bought for for the party, and we drank all of that and then some. <laughs> well, that's good to hear. Although I, I will I will say this: this is a, a minor criticism of of the of the old beer bash. As you get more popular, more sponsors, it seems like you're kind of toning it down. The first year you had really cool "Fear the Beard" T-shirts. The second year you had fake beards everyone wore. This year I'm looking at a picture of you. You're looking slim, trim. You got your hair cut. You're looking good, brother. I gave everybody a yogurt. <laughs> <laughs> non-fat, I no, hope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, non-fat yogurt. Um, oh, well, thank you. I, I appreciate that. It, it, it's, uh, you know, it's been interesting by all my weight loss and everything yeah. over the past year. Yeah. Well, good, good for you. Ho- hopefully, hopefully you'll you'll be able to keep it off. Let's talk about uh, yeah. the 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 keynote, the WWDC 2015 keynote. Overall, it's interesting how this is one of those keynotes where we can almost completely divorce the presentation from what was presented. Let's talk about the actual presentation of the keynote online. We're seeing a lot of folks complain about the quality of it. That it didn't seem like people like Iovine really reading off the script and Drake was a little yeah. incoherent and even Tim Cook and the other guys that you saw ADQ looking very obviously through his notes as he was doing things presentation wise. What did you think of WWDC keynote? Um, okay. So I think that Tim did great. I think Eddie did great. I, I like Eddie's presentations, you know, because he doesn't seem to take them too seriously, but yet he gets his point across uh, I think the the two uh, Susan Prescott did great. Uh, everybody basically from from Apple did great. Jimmy, they need to to let him work on uh, you know behind the scenes stuff and never come outside. <laughs> really? Yeah, Jimmy was awful. I don't think he was that bad on on on, on second was, viewing. Uh, he was he was reading off of the the the. Uh, prompter in front you yes could tell. yes he was several I times mean, he's just standing there reading and even the jokes didn't come off that well yep. so and drake they need to stop that they just need to stop it either have somebody competent or stop i mean remember when steve jobs had john mayer up on stage yep. that was great because they they actually made a point. I I don't understand what Drake's Drake's point was. Yeah, neither do I. I I'm popular because of social media. So yeah, uh, uh, hi guy from Toronto. I'm from Toronto. Um, yeah, it's just nah, did not work. They well, need to stop that. Yeah, the, I, I, there's no point to it either. It's it's, it's uh, no offense to Canada or Canadians or Drake. He wasn't that big of a star that Apple needed him to come out on stage. It wasn't yeah. like th- this was not Bono. This was not Mick Jagger. Right. You know, this was not a superstar that you wanted to have come out on stage. I-, I get Drake's message, which was he was an unsigned artist that the internet made him. And that's what Apple thinks Beats Music can do, Beats Music. 
Beats One can do for unsigned artists. I get that's the point they were trying to make. I just didn't think Drake was the guy to make that point. Yeah. But I thought all the Apple people did well. You could tell that they were um, they were rehearsed. And, and let's not forget when, you know, Eddie may be looking at notes when he's doing his demos and stuff. Steve did the same thing. Yep, just Steve less obvious. He flipping pages, and, and uh, you know, you could see that. And, and so what? He has a script to go through yep. for the demo. This is what they what they do and what they practice. I mean, so I, I didn't mind Eddie at all. I, I, I really, Personally, I really like Eddie and his presentation. We talk about this all the time, and a lot of it is because we're so used to the infinite perfection of a Steve Jobs keynote that everything is down to the absolute nth degree that this is the way a normal keynote looks this is the way a usual keynote works when people are being human beings when maybe they changed the script on on iovine uh, a couple days before and he was just relearning it or maybe just isn't a very good public speaker there's nothing wrong with that not everyone very actually few people are good public speakers so I, I, that's why I wanted to separate the, the, the information from the presenters. I don't think the presenters okay, well, were as bad got, as everyone said. You've got Phil Schuller, who's one of the best presenters uh, that was sitting in the audience. He could have done music. Yep. But, you know, obviously Jimmy and Beats, all that kind of stuff, they wanted him to get up, but it, it was a complete failure. I would have loved it. I would have preferred to have seen Dre up. Yeah, well, you know, whatever. Arcsign asks, uh, Sean asks Jim if he thinks the Beats people will get another shot at the main stage with a lot of rehearsal or only after midnight in their element. Uh, I I don't know. I mean, you know, people recognize Jimmy's name in the industry and yeah. they recognize him and he's a big draw. Uh, maybe they think Jimmy did good. Uh, he didn't. I think I think that uh, Tim Cook is a lot more forgiving of this stuff than than uh, Steve Jobs ever was. I think they'll definitely be up on stage if they're needed. I think they'll definitely be up on stage at some other point uh, in the future. I don't th- I don't think uh, uh, Cook is nearly the perfectionist that Jobs was, and, and Cook will allow people to um, act more naturally as presenters would do. I would I would rather have YouTube's entire catalog down, downloaded to my iPhone than see that again. <laughs> wow, wow, that's kind of brutal. Let's talk about the the things that were announced at WWDC. Keeping in mind, folks, that a WWDC is not about we as consumers. It is a developer conference, and things are targeted at yes. and meant for developers. That being said. There were some cool things that Apple announced for consumers, things I'm looking forward to. El Capitan, if nothing else, the ability to do that jiggly thing with the mouse, oh, that just rocked. Oh, that yeah. rocked. I love that. I, I'll, I'll download it just for that. And as you said in your thoughts on Apple's keynote piece today, uh, notes being updated is going to be very interesting. Well, there's notes and there's split view and, you know, all of this stuff. It's it's all great, great stuff. Although, you know what? You said something about split view in your piece. You said uh, split, view, split view will make that whole process much more efficient. That, to me, makes it sound like you don't use any kind of split view app already. Is that true? I'm sorry? You don't use any kind of app that already does that kind of split view thing for you, do you? No. Really? How come? Because too dumb. Okay, fair enough. I <laughs> I use an app called no, I, I use an app called Magnet, and Magnet allows me to, with key commands, be able to make Windows jump to the left, jump to the right, to the top, to the bottom, to another screen, if I wanted to. So, I've, I'm, so Split View for me is something I've been using all the time. It'd be nice to have it built into the OS, though. Yeah, yeah, it is. Anything else, about, anything else about El Capitan? I think I agree with you when you, you're talking about the fact that it's nice to see this seems to be focused on performance and stability more than more than anything else. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. I just there was a, just a whole bunch of feedback all of a sudden. Um, I, I always well, fix your I, shit. I, <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Um, <laughs> iOS 9 is going to be interesting, if only because, and I said this during the actual keynote, it feels like iOS 9 is going to make my iPad useful again. 
Since I've had the iPhone 6 Plus, my, my iPad is just a bedside alarm clock and reader now. But I think with all that kind of cool, funky stuff that Apple showed off in iOS 9 for the iPad, if nothing else, I'm actually going to be able to use or want to use the iPad again. Do, do you agree? Because you use the iPad a lot, don't you? Uh, I, I use my iPads. I mean, I use it all. I use the iPads. I use the iPhone. I use uh, uh, the Mac. You know, I just, I, I, I have it all. Yeah. So anything that makes my job easier on any of the devices only increases my efficiency. Because the iPad is a very good consumption device. It's also a decent creation device, but it can be better. That's one of the problems I have with it is that you, there's just so many things like cutting and pasting between apps. It's just such a pain in the ass process. I rarely do it. I'll, I'll, I'll save stuff to notes and then come back to the computer and actually create the content that I wanted to create. So I like the idea that it feels like it's going to be more Mac-like from that point of view when it comes to iOS 9 and the iPad. Yep. Siri being yeah, I more. Don't, pro- I don't disagree with that. Seeing be, Siri being more proactive. Tell me why you like this new version of Siri. I, I don't use Siri very much at all. So I'll. I'll, well, see, I'll here's, it, here's the thing with the watch. I mean, the watch has made me use Siri more oh, okay. yeah. than what I've ever done before. So has Siri improved? Yes, it has. But mm. I think our usage of it has grown so much since the watch that we notice it more now. I mean, Siri could have been, you know, killer for months, and I just didn't know because no. I didn't have a watch. No. So I like the proactive bit because it's, it's going to make things just that much easier because Siri knows you're going in the car and you have a playlist that you normally play. Hey, here it is. You know, just it's, it's the simple things. It's the details, and that's what we need taken care of for us. Now, Kim and I were, as we're watching the video, I, I noticed something I, saw, I didn't notice the first time. When, uh, when Hair Force One was talking about, you know, getting up in the morning and plugging in, when he was in his bedroom and plugging in his headphones, that the iPad, sort of the iPhone, knew he was in his bedroom and therefore he was doing meditation. But then he said when he was in his exercise room, his, his home, home gym, and he plugged headphones in, that it would start playing exercise music. Did you catch that part? Uh, not the way that you're describing it, but that's interesting, isn't it? Because to me, it makes me think, how the hell is location services on the iPhone that specific that it knows the different rooms of my house? Monty says the meditation app was time-sensitive. It suggested that as a wake-up, which is fine. But still, he talked about going into his home gym and plugging in his headphones. And maybe, again, that's, maybe, maybe that's, again, also time-sensitive. Is there a concern on your part that Siri is going to start knowing and learning more about you than maybe you want it to? No, because I know it's not going to go anywhere. And how do you know that? Because none of my information has gone anywhere so far. And if Apple does start to use my information then we're going to have a problem <laughs> the, same, the same way that, uh, you know, uh, Google does or, or a lot of other companies do, you know, and, and that's one of the things that we don't like. So. I think it's really interesting to hear Apple hammering home, both with uh, Tim Cook's comments of last week and Federique's comments that them saying very specifically, we don't want to mine your data. Yeah, Apple right. has not said it outright. This is a Google versus Apple kind of thing, very much like, you know, uh, uh, Flash versus non-Flash. Apple hasn't gone that far, but it's obvious that's what they're talking about. They're saying Google is a company who wants to mine your data. Apple is a company who just wants to use your data to make things easier for you. We don't care about your data. Right. And I believe Apple when they say that. that we've talked about this several times in the show in the past. I trust Apple. When they say that, I well, believe Apple when they say that. And that's why we give them our credit cards yeah. and, you know, everything else, because we trust them. So I, I don't think that there's any reason why we shouldn't. Yep. Well, they haven't given us any reason to not trust them. Right. Right. If Google came out tomorrow and said, okay, never mind, we're not going to mine your data, no one would believe them. 
Even if they honestly no. meant it, we simply wouldn't believe them because no. we've seen what they've done in the past. Definitely not believe them. The, I uh, wouldn't. The, what do you think was the single biggest piece of news coming out of WWDC? It's interesting that uh, some folks, obviously the, the developer types, are saying Swift going open source. I don't agree with that. But what do you think well, was a, I mean, a big it, deal? It all depends on who you ask. Yep. I mean, WBC is one of these shows that you're going to get all kinds of different answers. For Mac developers, it's going to be the Mac stuff. Yep. And for you know iOS developers, I mean, Swift is, is going to be huge for both of those groups. But, you know, um, Apple clearly thought that Apple Music was, was the big thing. Yep. Because that was the one more thing. Yep. So was that actually the big thing or, or no? Well, we don't know. I mean, you know, Apple Music is something that we're going to really have to wait and see how it goes. Um, I had a, a, a chance to have a look at it. And, you know, it's, it's a, a cross between what Apple had with some features of what Beats had and with some Apple polish on it. But as I said in the story today, the problem with iTunes Radio was never polish. The problem was functionality, and I just don't know if that functionality is there. Is it going to be better than Spotify? Because mm-hmm. I have Spotify. I have RDO. Yep. I have Pandora. I have iHeartRadio. Is iTunes Radio going to be as good as those ones? I don't know. Well, I mean, there's several people who have already d- decided that iTunes, that uh, that uh, uh, the music app connects, all that kind of stuff, is already a flop. That is not going to beat Spotify. Well, I, I don't think that you can decide that. Thank you. It's not coming out until the 30th, the last time I looked. So, I mean, obviously Spotify is going to have its its fans and people that, that want to use that. And there are a lot of great reasons to use Spotify. Yeah. yeah. It, it's, a, it's a great app. It's a great service. Uh, Apple is the one playing catch up here. So sure. Can Apple beat it? Who knows? I haven't had a chance to really use it uh, just for for a little bit, so I not certainly not enough to say that it's great, but not enough to say that it sucks either. From the description of what you saw in the keynote and people you talked to post keynote, from the description, does it sound like something that at the very least you'd be interested in? Well. We're gonna have to. Uh, we're gonna have to see. See, I think you know? I think I'm interested in it, and I definitely will sign up for the for the free three months trial. I'll definitely sign up for the for the for the free three months trial. Everybody will. <laughs> to me, I think the biggest deal of Connect isn't the fact of streaming, whether it be my own music or uh, anything from the iTunes Store. And by the way, it is everything on the iTunes Store. You will be able to stream. To me, it's the connect thing. Sorry, it's it's the global radio, the DJs. Because I posted on the loop uh, our good friend uh, uh, John Binky Welch's story about DJs. That's one of the things I miss about music. I remember you and I both, Jim, grew up in Halifax in the in the seventies and eighties. I remember those DJs. I remember those guys on the radio saying, "Here's a cool song." It wasn't the top forty song. It wasn't the song from the latest hottest band it was just some guy who i trusted i trusted his musical taste saying you're going to like this and i'm looking forward yeah. to that the problem is with only only three djs if you don't like their taste well you're shit out of luck you know there's, yeah it, i'm it, so i'm i'm still not sure how that's going to work because they said it wasn't about genre and it wasn't about you know it was about good music yeah. well i then i don't understand because I like rock and metal. Yep. So what kind of good music is it if, to me if it's pop? Yep. You know, so I'm not sure how that's all going to work. I, I don't know. I think that's going to work depending on who Apple is targeting with these three DJs. You know, DJs are always about their own personal biases. There's no DJ in the world that can, that can be an expert in every single kind of music. So if these guys have... You know, let's make assumptions based on who we think these people are. Let's say the guy in New York is a is a is a rap dance, uh, pop soul kind of guy. Well, maybe you as a metal guy won't like him. Maybe the the yeah. woman in London 
is a more harder edge rock and hair metal and that kind of stuff. Maybe you will like her, and maybe other people won't. I don't think it's going to be just these three people all the time. I, li- I do like the idea, though, Jim. I don't know if other thing, other people caught on to this. This is going to be global music at the same time. I re- For some reason, I really like the idea of if I'm listening to this guy at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, there's some guy in Senegal listening to the same song at the exact same time. There's a guy in Singapore who's listening to this. There's, there's a guy in... Paris, who's this? To me, that seems like a really neat concept that we're all listening to the same music at the same time. Is, is that do you? Do you tweak on that at all? Do you think that's interesting? No. All right. Thanks. I don't honestly. <laughs> I, I don't. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I just I, I was just gonna let you keep going on and on, but I no doesn't do anything for really? me. Really? Oh, that's such a shame. No. I was disappointed. No. To, I was disappointed to not hear. I think what you were saying. About more genres. Yeah, I have said it wasn't about genres, but we want genres. We know they're going to be pop music. We know there's going to be hip-hop. We know there's going to be that kind of album-oriented, no, sorry, adult, not adult, but but you say under 30 focused music. But I'm a big fan of what's colloquially known as world music. I love Caribbean music. I love South, South African music. I love South American music. I want to hear that kind of stuff. Apple hasn't said anything about those kinds of things. It, will there be an area where, Jim, you can go listen to metal from the 80s? Will there yeah. be a place where you can listen to alternative and, and, and different styles of music? One of the downsides of music, maybe downside is the wrong word, is it's all broken down into these genres and subgenres, and we've gotten down to these nitty-gritty little dials on our radio. I don't think music is going to solve that issue. I think Apple is looking to solve a bigger issue. Where are you? Are you in a bar again? Oh, Jesus. Well, you're doing all the talking, so what's the difference? <laughs> because I can't because I can't hear over your noise. I was hoping you were walking somewhere. I was filling. So I gotta I gotta rehearse. Do, do rehearse for what? Oh, uh, for a little thing tonight. What are you doing? Uh with Jane Stinsy. Sorry, with who? Yeah. Where, where at? Do people, is this open for other people to go see? No, it was a ticket thing. Oh, geez. Well, dude, I'll, I'll let you go then. I didn't realize that you, you had a gig to, to play at. I didn't know that. We'll talk about this next week. Well, that's all right. Are you sure? Hey, we, we do all kinds of things, don't we? Uh, yeah, we do. So the other thing that Apple hasn't talked about, and I haven't seen anybody talk about this. I don't know if you know anybody yourself, Jim. How are artists getting paid? How is that little guy in his basement in New York City, that piano player in Paris, how are they making money off of this? I know it wasn't something you're going to talk about at WWDC, but if you could poke around with your contacts and find that stuff out, I think that could be interesting. Because what could happen is literally some guy in his basement in New York City in the Bronx could conceptually become a millionaire off the music app without ever having any sort of record labels involved in that. And that would be a big game changer. That's the other thing I'm really interested in seeing about the music app is will Apple, will Apple fulfill what they said that they want to discover and nurture new artists. I think that could be really cool. That would be big. I don't know whether it'll happen or not, but it'd be big. Is there a, I know there is in, in, um, uh, hip hop. Is there a big mixtape audience in your genre in rock and roll and in metal? I think we buy a lot of stuff. You, yeah. know, or, or, you know, there is a lot of the Spotify stuff, but this is more about bands, you know, and you support the band. So, I don't know, maybe I'm out of the loop. I think maybe because hip hop it's easier to create hip hop because all all it is is a rhyme and a beat and a drum machine. To create metal, you need a band. You know, unless yeah. you unless you can play all the instruments yourself, you're not making a metal mixtape all by yourself. You need a whole band to do this with. I think it's probably easier. I think it's why we hear more about them in hip hop because it's easier to do in hip hop than it might be in metal or rock and roll. Yeah, that's true. All right, I'm going to let you go because um, I'm done talking to you. 
All right. <laughs> Folks, if you get a chance, check Again. out. Check, check, <laughs> don't forget, check out the Dalrymple Report. This week, Merlin and Jim talk about TV and Jim being mistaken for Duck Dynasty, which I'm surprised doesn't happen more often, dude. Thanks, Sean. All right, buddy. Talk to you soon. Th- thanks. Bye. He just seemed really distracted. I think I think he was trying to get back to his uh, his 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 band thing. Why am I hearing myself in super echo? What the hell? Do you are, are you hearing that? No. Are you hearing? Uh, blah, blah, blah. There's something really really weird. Well, that's why. <laughs> I just hit that button by accident. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um. Folks, uh, send us your emails to onair at yourmaclifeshow.com. What are your thoughts about the keynote, about the WWDC keynote? I, I thought, and I'm not picking on her. I would never pick on uh, second mom, Phyllis Reynolds. But she made a, an in- interesting comment by accident when she said that, she asked me on, on Twitter last night, Sean, now that you've um, watched the keynote a couple of times, what do you... What do you think I should buy, or what? Sh- or what shouldn't I buy? And I said to her, and to me, that showed her, uh, her lack of understanding of what WWDC is. There was nothing announced on Monday that you could buy. There's nothing announced on Monday that you can even use as an average person till the end of June. iOS nine not going to be available in the fall. The awkwardly named OS 10, 10.11 El Capitan, not going to be available in the fall. Watch OS, not going to be available in the fall. So, and none of those things, you don't have to buy new gear for any of those things. The Watch OS will update on your watch that you have now. If you have most iPhones that are running iOS 8, you'll be able to still run OS 9. Most Macs, if you're running Yosemite, you'll definitely be able to run El Capitan. So you won't be buying anything. So a lot of folks were maybe a little confused by this because what a WWDC is, I'm directing this at Kim, is this is Apple saying, here's a bunch of new tools. Mm -hmm. Think of of WWDC as, as a carpentry workshop. And there's a bunch of carpenters in the audience. And the head carpenter just said, we're going to build a house using all these new tools. And they gave, gave a bunch of different hammers and a different kind of super saw and a really neat band saw. I'm making shit up because I don't know what these tools actually do. But that's kind of what Apple just did. Here's what we built with these new tools. We built this cool mm-hmm. thing with these new tools. What are you guys going to build with, with the new tools? Apple, you may have heard before you dozed off that Apple was talking about something called an API. I believe that stands for Application Programming Interface. And what that is, is Apple says, we built the software and there's a bunch of hooks in it that you can hang your software off of. Hmm. And when you hook your software using the API into ours, the two pieces of software can can work together. So, for example, I told you that Apple said they were going to allow developers access to the uh, haptic sorry, the Taptic engine on the watch, Mm. it means a third-party developer will now be able to use that tapping feature for their own devices. Right. For good or bad. That's the problem. You you may Mm. not know. And you may end up with 75 apps on your watch that are tapping away in your wrist all the freaking time driving you crazy. But that's that's the danger or or, or the good thing about Apple opening this stuff up to people. So it wasn't meant to be a big rah-rah, go and buy things tomorrow kind of kind of event that being said there were some cool things there um i think they're cool i think apple encourages or is they create things that encourage others to be creative Mm, yes yes it's a win-win it's really interesting that apple um and all by the way all companies google does this microsoft does this Mm. but for some reason maybe it's because we're already fans of it it feels like Apple is saying, these you can do some really cool stuff. And not only that, and they made this clear t- to the developers, you can do some really cool stuff, and if you do it right, you can make a buttload of money. Mm-hmm. Apple has given out $30 billion to developers. $30 billion <laughs> they gave to people who created cool software. 
for your Macintosh, for your watch, for your iPhone, for your iPad. That's why these guys do this. You know, certain positions do it because it's fun, it's cool, it's, it's, it's geeky, it's nerdy. But a lot of those folks who are, who are at WWDC, they're, they're business people. They want to make money on the work they do. They want to get paid for the things they do. And they want to hear from Apple, how are you going to help me make money? Mm-hmm. What are you going to do to help me make money? So now what they do after the keynote, the guys will, will go to the hotel room, go to a bar and go, okay, so Apple just said we can do this. What if we did this to our app and did, oh, yeah, yeah, let's do that. Mm-hmm. And then they'll code it, and then the next day they'll go to these labs and sessions and they'll say to the guy, I don't know how to, I've got this idea, but how do I hook it into the thing? And the Apple geek will say, oh, it's easy. You just you do this code thing. And, oh, thanks very much. I'll go back and make a million dollars. That's what WWDC is for. Hmm. Um, Arcsign points out, how artists get paid, how much music you have access to, where you can access your music. All these things don't engage audiences and customers. The one thing that matters is hearing music together with others. In person with others, in the car with your friends, in your home at gatherings, at parties. You're shaking your head no. Well, that's part of it. I mean, but music's very personal. I like listening to music on my own, too. A lot. You're saying that while music is very personal, you don't believe music is as social as what he is claiming with, with that statement. No. I mean, it is. It is. It's both. But, but I... I think people like listening to music alone, too. Because it depends what mood you're in. It can lift you. It can bring you down. Mm-hmm. It can do whatever you want it to do. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I, but I, I'm kind of in between both. I, I understand what Arcsine is saying, that um, listening to music with others is very social, obviously. But I think that music has to touch you personally mm-hmm. first. Mm-hmm. I'm just trying to think of a situation... Where I've been to a concert or or a bar. Well, like the Biff Naked concert we went to. Yes. You know, I was with a bunch of people that were really into that kind of music. It didn't make me like it anymore. <laughs> I wonder if that's a requirement, that you have to access the music privately first. Mm. Well... No. No, it just has to hit a nerve. It has to hit a personal nerve with you. Like, I can listen to a piece of music with a a group of other people that I've never heard before, and if I like it, it's like, oh, yeah, I really like this. Mm. Who is this? What is it? I'm just disagreeing with my own premise when I said that, yeah, it's private, because I still remember in, in... the one thing about music we can all agree on is that it does touch you. However you learn about music, however you hear music, however you experience music, good music touches you. Whatever your definition of good music is. But I remember the first time I ever was touched by music publicly. Because like most of us, I listened to radio when I was a kid. I listened to it at home. Um, when I got my first transistor radio, I remember putting those earbuds in. They were freaking uncomfortable. And lying there in bed. Actually... When I was a kid in Nova Scotia, I could lie in bed and listen to New York City radio because of the way radio works, they bounce around. But I would get New York City radio. And I think that's where my, first of all, my love of the Yankees came from because I could listen to New York Yankee baseball games. But I could also listen to New York radio stations. Mm. And there were hip-hop only stations in New York. There weren't any such thing in Nova Scotia. Very much like what Binky was saying in his article, that because he had access to the, the Miami um, uh, dance and soul and hip hop and funk station. He's some white guy from the Burbs, but here he is listening to this black music. That is the music he loves now. Same with May. But for me, I remember going to a concert in Montreal, and the band who I'd never heard of before played one song. And I, when I got home, I bought all their albums. I think they had like five albums. The very first song that they played, I said, I'm going to... No, it wasn't the first song. I uh, think back, it was, their, it was their encore song. But the, from the first song they played, I said, I, I want more of these guys. The first song, let's see if you guys recognize it. This weird guy comes out on stage in a big white suit, like oversized white suit, carrying a big oversized guitar, playing the guitar. And I was like, who the hell is this weirdo? And he starts singing. 
and the song was Take Me to the River. You know the band? Oh, I love that song. You know the band? Mm. See if the audience gets it. Most Mosquito, Talking Heads. Oh, yeah, Talking and Heads. And then they started kicking out the jam. I was like, who are these people? And I love them. And then they played Burning Them in the House. Oh, that was it. I was done. <laughs> I was done. Once they played Burning Them in the House, I was like, yeah, I'm buying everything you own. I'm buying your T-shirts. I'm buying your ball caps. I'm buying your records. I'm buying everything you got. And I've been a huge Talking Heads fan ever since. Mm. So music can be experienced. Uh, uh, it's personal. It has to affect you personally. Mm. That's why this music thing is so interesting to me. Can Apple do that? Because one of the things is, and this is good, you like different music than I do. Right? Yes, very much so. You are very much, and this is not a knock, and don't take mm. this as an insult, you like top 40 pop. Mm-hmm. I also like some of your stuff <clears throat> too. Yeah, and I don't, I don't like anything of yours. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not too that is not a two-way street. That's not. That's not true. I'm. I'm embarrassed by how much I like Bruno Mars. Yes. Really, really do like Bruno Mars. Um, but that Albatross song, I want to rip my ears off and feed them I know, to a dog. But I like stuff you that's catchy that and annoying as well, because it's like me. It's annoying. <laughs> You're not annoying. I can be. No, that's not true at all. You're not annoying at all. But, um, yeah, Mosquito says a great video of them much earlier playing at CBGB's. Dude, come on. I've already got that video. Um, but can Apple's music app satisfy these two different kinds of music fans? And Jim and you guys. The only thing we saw on stage, and granted they had a limited amount of time, apparently almost unlimited amount of time, they couldn't show you everything. But we saw nothing about reggae, saw nothing about African music, saw nothing about salsa, nothing about Cuban music, nothing about classical music, jazz. Um, do Europeans have their own music? Honestly, is there a European sound? Not European. Have you, you know how many countries there are in Europe yeah. and the difference between them? So, no. I can't believe you asked me that question. Like there is no European You asked me that sound. question like I'm an American. Yeah, duh. <laughs> um, but you know what I mean? I mean there's the, the, we didn't see, I didn't even see any of that on screen. I know, but what are they going to do? Just list every type of genre of music there is that's going to be available on there? Like, it's music. Music but is music. But they mentioned no genres. And I, I understand that Jimmy Iovine said That's probably the best it's not about it. genres. But right. the problem is... It's about what's popular, what people want to listen to. But what's popular here is different from what's popular in Edmonton versus... But that's what they'll find out. It's going to evolve. Like he said, it's an ecosystem that will evolve based on what's put in and taken out. Monty says, There was nothing in the Apple Music presentation from the keynote that made me think I even might... Want to pay 10 bucks a month for it. Monty, here's a question. Do you pay 10 bucks a month for anything else right now? I don't think that this would convince people who aren't already interested in streaming music to pay 10 bucks. Mm. I think if you already stream music, then maybe this would interest you. And it's free for the first three months for everyone anyway, so you might as well mm. poke at it and see. I don't much care about the Artist Connect thing. I don't need to see behind-the-scenes videos. I don't need to see lyrics. The your but it's song. interesting for people that are into music and people that are up and coming, up and coming potential artists that yes. want to be, like my stepdaughter, will love it. That's what I want to see. I want to see the up and coming folks, people you've never heard of. Mm -hmm. I also want to see the other thing for me is DJs. To me, I don't know why I'm tweaking so much on the DJ thing. To me, the DJ is so important. Because maybe it'll bring back, as Binky said in the article, and, and, and what I've said, those days of being home in Halifax, in the backyard, just sitting in a lawn chair and listening to a DJ talk about music and saying, you're going to like this. Mm. And trusting that guy, believing that guy, and going, wow, I do like this. Or, I've never heard of this band before. Wow, that's, that's really kind of cool. That's the curation aspect of it that Apple thinks is so important, the human curation of it. The problem is, if they only have three people, and you don't like all, you don't like their musical choices, 
then it's got it's got no interest to you. The other thing I like about it too is that you heard little snippets of it on the presentation. The artist interviews could be interesting. Hmm. Like they 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 played a snippet of a Florence and Machine Florence and the Machine uh, interview. <clears throat> I'd love to listen to that interview. I love Florence and the Machine. I would love to listen to her talk. She's got a great accent, first of all. But she also seemed really kind of interesting. And on the video, they showed uh, Dr. Dre talking about something. Whatever Dr. Dre wants to talk about, I'll listen. So that kind of stuff I would really be interested in, too. Mm -hmm. Not traditional radio, here's the first song, second song, third song. But being able to tune into interviews, well-done interviews, with artists that I like and respect and want to know more about. So I think that will give me more... Of what I'm looking for on a day day to day basis, mm -hmm. and the streaming thing is not a bad idea. And I like mm -hmm. the. I mean, I've been using Spotify, mm -hmm. but you don't know until it comes out, yeah. until you try it, because now you're being like all these people you keep criticizing for the last few days. You're trying to guess what it's going to be like and whether you'll like it or not, and you'll like it if it does this and if it does that, or you won't if it doesn't do that. Yes, but you I'm not saying. Yet. As someone has said, I can't remember who it was which ass hat said it. I'm not saying that the music, Apple Music, is going to be a failure and it won't beat Spotify. I'm not saying that at all. And yet some people are actually saying that. Hmm. And they've never fucking used it. It's been out for less than 24 hours. It's been talked about for less than 24 hours, yet someone's already said, written an article that said, it won't beat Spotify. You're an idiot. Yeah, that's stupid. Yeah, actually, Brian, it wasn't called Mac. I think it was either Vox or Verge or Mashables or one of those other morons anyway uh <clears throat> excuse me as always send me your thoughts about this will you guys buy beats beats one are you gonna buy into this whole streaming global radio connect thing is it something that because <laughs> right now we have uh spotify gave us a 99 cent for three month deal so yeah i signed up for it and as Eddie Q said, you're not supposed to, but I gave my login info to Kim so she can listen to Spotify at work or in the car or at the gym, wherever she wants to listen to it. So one day I'm sitting here and I've got, oh, that's right. I had Rage Against the Machine. Just blare it. Just blare it up. Rage Against the Machine. Oh, and I'm working and I'm reading. And Rage Against the Machine. Ah, oh, it's so much fun. Something had stopped. And some <laughs> pop, top, top 40 pap comes or on. Pitbull. <laughs> or Pitbull. Or Pitbull, something like that. It's like, what the hell is this? And I looked up, and Spotify had changed. Click back to Rage, 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 was coming through on my, on my computer and vice versa. It was like so annoying. Yeah. So yeah, we're we're gonna get uh, we're gonna get uh, the the family plan in a heartbeat for uh, for you and me. If after after three months we think it's gonna be mm -hmm. fulfill our needs, it'll be good. You think so? Yep. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think one of the things we I think we talked about on last week's show is I'm a little more jaded than you are because I've watched Apple do this before. I've watched Ping. I've watched iTunes. I've watched Genius. All those things Apple's tried in the past, they failed at. I've watched iTunes Radio. Just all of it sucked. So I'm reserving complete I want it to be a success. Mm -hmm. So I think it's an inter interesting idea. I like, I like the way Apple's presenting it. And I certainly hope it's a success, but I don't, I'm not, not jumping on the bandwagon of, yes, success, yes, 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 just yet. So let me go know what you guys think. On air at your Mac Life show. Dot com. So, how many of you guys are, I don't want to say chefs, cookers, cookies, cook people? What the hell am I talking about? How many of you guys actually cook on a regular basis? I'm sure most of you do. Now, we talked about this before. Interesting if I said, you don't like to cook. You know how to cook, but you don't, no. not, you don't like Now, why don't you like to cook? Hmm. I, I don't like to cook things if I have to follow a recipe. I'm not good at following instructions she and really orders. I'm really not. Really so isn't. if it's simple, easy, all goes in one pot, sure, not a problem. But if I have to faff around with shit and 
chop it up here and put it in a separate bowl and cook this for five minutes and then leave it for five and then mix it in with something else ten minutes later. No. Monty says foodies. No, I don't think. No, f- aren't foodies those who like to eat? That's me. Food? <laughs> and not just, but eat good food. I think of that as, as being a foodie. Um, Sherry likes faff around. Is that how oh, you spell it? Yeah, is faff. It, is, is there three F's in faffs? Yeah. See, I think faff is, it should be P H A P H. No, that would be faff. Faff. Oh, faff. Faff. No, faff. All right. So, did, did, now, you said you, you know how to cook. Where did you learn to cook? How did you learn to cook? Uh, at home, watching my mom. Watch your mom. That's yeah. how most people yeah. learn to cook. That's how most women certainly And that's probably why I'm the way I am, because she didn't like cooking either. <laughs> exactly. <yeah. laughs> but I'm, the point I'm trying to get at is, I think most people, most women, that's how you learn to cook. Your mom liked to cook, mm-hmm. and you watched her, you helped her, she asked you to help. But that's why most men don't know how to cook. It's because, at least of a certain age. I disagree. All the other men I've ever known have been better cooks than me and yeah, but, like but to you, cook. But, but you're not a good cook. I know. That's what I'm saying. They're really good. Like the guys have always been really good cooks and liked to cook and follow recipes. The only thing they're really crappy at is cleaning up afterwards. <laughs> so that would be my thing. Is by, That's a fair deal. You cook, I'll clean. Okay. But I think that as a majority, most guys weren't taught to cook by our moms. No. And so, therefore, as you become an adult, as you become, especially you know, in college, you're on your own, uh, you'd rather be drinking beer than, than cooking. So, we just don't learn it. So, up until recently, and, one of the, and the other thing is, too, when you're, whether you're male or female, in general, cooking for yourself sucks. Yeah. It's boring. It's just, it's no fun. It's a whole lot easier just buy an instant pizza you know go get chinese food go out to eat it's a whole lot easier than cooking any kind of involved certainly you don't in any involved meal mm. i mean i don't know how involved is but I, I i can't imagine you know making uh, uh well you wouldn't make a roast dinner for one exactly that's right that's right you, 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 just, you just wouldn't bother and so therefore you also don't learn to cook so i've always wanted to I like food. I'm a big fan of food. I'm a big fan of cooked food. And I like cooking with somebody. I would all be more than happy if, if, if a girlfriend said, here, would you cook up, would, would, would you chop up these vegetables? Ah, yeah, sure. I'll get a knife. I'll chop vegetables. Not a problem. You know, dice these carrots or whatever the hell you do with potatoes and that kind of stuff. But just recently with, with Kim that we've started, I've started to cook because she didn't like it. And I think, well, you know, she's off. She has a real job. And she goes off to do a real job at a real office. And I'm sitting here doing nothing. I'm really not. I'm working all day long. Mm-hmm. I thought, well, you know, I'll start doing some little simple things. And I started off with my world famous, to me, pasta sauce, which came out pretty good. Yeah, I like that. My pasta sauce is not bad. It's Italian sausage and mushrooms and, and pasta sauce, and it's pretty good. And the first pot I made, it lasts us for a week. Yeah, <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> we both ate pasta for a week. Every dinner, pasta, pasta, pasta. And then, I don't know how I got into it, but I found this. Oh, well, that's right. One of the things is, because you're, you're two people, you have, I was trying to figure out some way to do a shopping list kind of thing. A shopping list where... If I'm out and about on the motorcycle and Kim wanted to tell me, oh, don't forget to pick up carrots, she could do it. Rather than just sending a text message, was there an app we could use to do this? And I found this really cool app called AnyList. AnyListApp.com is the website. Let me see if I can't pull this up for you folks to see on the show. I can do. I can, I can do this. I I am a professional. Hang on. All right. So I have to escape out of this first. All right. Sorry, Kim. Where is it? Oh. There we go. Sorry. I'm, I I don't know why this thing all of a sudden. Oh, I know why. Never mind. 
Let's bring the windows forward. Any of this. I've lost the window completely. Bring all to the front. Yeah, I've completely lost the window. Somewhere in, <laughs> in the Neverland of between here and there is the window. That well, was great. You so can I am going to open up a new window. Yes, I am. Does that show the roof? Or is it there? Mm. Oh, it's not very good. Mm. It's very good now. Why isn't it doing it? Screen sharing. Let me hide. Okay. Uh, b -b options. There's no way to hide screen sharing. Why isn't this? Sorry, I'm, I'm in the wrong. Screen sharing won't go away. Mm. Okay, hang on, hang on. There it is. What the hell? That was just so strange. <sighs> what a pain in the ass that was. So any list <coughs> app dot com is the app we're talking about. It's available on the uh, on the iTunes store, but it's also available as a website. So what you can do is you you sign up, and on your phone, I thought my ears popped. On the phone, it shows up as a a regular app, and you can um, do lists, and you can do shared grocery lists. So both Kim and I have access to the same grocery list. So when I, you can see it on the, on, I'll show you on the on the video. So we we both have the app, and you can see it's a shared grocery list. And it says uh, 12 items remaining, Kim guy. So Kim and I are sharing that grocery list. And when you click on it, it's got a list of all, the, obviously, the, the groceries that you have put on it, how we each put on it, in categories like uh, cooking and baking, dairy, meat, pastry, all that kind of stuff. So it kind of knows. And household stuff. And household stuff, Cleaning. exactly. Yeah. So you put it, you, you, you just type, you hit the, the plus button up here in the, uh, in the corner, and then you type things in. At the bottom, you've got a list of favorites. So things that you get all the time, half and half, and bread and eggs and milk and that kind of stuff. You can um, do that. So then as you're walking through the grocery store, you're just looking at your list. It's just the same written down list or notes on your iPhone list. And it swipes, and you swipe things on and off. It's really kind of cool. The next part about it, though, is that it's also got a... At the bottom, you'll see the where it says recipes and lists. So you click on recipes. And this is where, to me, the app becomes really, really cool. Using either the app on the phone or the website, and they've got a little uh, bookmark thing on the website, you can grab recipes off of websites and put them into the app. So... Here is a recipe, one of the recipes I like to make. Let me do this. Baked Dijon salmon, which is so good. So there's a recipe for baked Dijon salmon. And I'll show it to you on the on the website too. So I can go to the I can go to the any list uh, website. Our version. So 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 you get a uh, app version of the website. So here's here's your here's your grocery list. So here's the, the list of things that we need to get. I need to get next time I'm about shopping. Sorry, here's the list of things I need to get next time I'm about shopping. And then they have recipes. So you can add a recipe from a website, and then you can add it to a collection. So I've got collections of recipes I've gotten off websites. Pasta, chicken, main dish, fish, soup, veggies, smoothies, all that kind of stuff. So, for example... Let's do a search for um, your out the store and, oh, they've got a really good deal this week at Save On on salmon. What kind of salmon recipes do I have? So you open up the app, and the app in the, on the, the phone and the website look almost identical. 
And so you do a search for salmon. And now all of these recipes pop up that are salmon-based. That has the word salmon in them. So that's kind of cool. Then you click on one of the recipes, and it shows you the ingredients. But the neat thing is this part. Add all ingredients to the list. When you click on that, all of these ingredients then jump to your shopping list, which is really kind of cool. So you know you'll need salmon, and you don't need salt, pepper, but butter, those things you probably have. But you add all these ingredients to your shopping list, and then you just check them off. It's really kind of neat. And then inside the app, you can see where the app, where the uh, recipe came from, what, what websites. You can see what collections you've got it put in. Um, and here are the instructions, the preparation steps, uh, notes for it, a photo for it, all kinds of interesting things for the app. I really like this app. And that, so now what I've done is I've subscribed to, to a bunch of recipe mailing lists, recipe websites, that every morning they send me these recipes. And I read through them and go, oh, that sounds like an interesting recipe. And all I do is I go to the recipe website. So here's the recipe web web website for that baked salmon filet Dijon. I click up here into this little uh, bookmarky thing. And what it does, import a recipe from the current page. So I click on that. Wait a couple of seconds, and the AnyList JavaScript, or whatever script it is, grabs the name, grabs a picture, grabs the ingredients list, grabs the preparation steps. And you can edit all this stuff, too, if you choose to make these. I, I like making longer. Um, you pray see it. A what? You pray see it. What does that mean? You shorten it. No, I actually make it longer. So for me, this recipe where it says preheat oven to 400 degrees, I, that's, and then line a channel pan, to me that's two steps because I'm an idiot. I want things a lot simpler. Oh. So I want this to be step number one. Do that. This to be step number two. Do that. Um, and again, here's the recipe source, and then you put it in the collection you want. So in this case, it's, it's a main dish. It's uh, uh, seafood. And so you can put it in multiple collections, too. Now, sometimes you'll get to a website, and it will say, um, because the website's in a certain format, that it can't grab the stuff. And that's okay. You can always just cut and paste. What I'll do is I'll open up two windows side by side and just cut and paste the information back and forth. Um, the AnyList app, if I remember correctly, does cost for the pro version. And I don't know. Let me just find out how much it costs for the pro version. Someone know? I don't. I, I don't know. Uh, someone. So, someone will uh, let me know. But it's really kind of cool. All oh, premium features. Okay, here unlock full power. Yeah, eleven ninety nine for the year for the family. I think it's worth it yeah, if you. Kinda cool. If you want to collect recipes, and for me, what's important about a recipe is that they're really, really simple. I'm like Kim. I don't want anything complicated. But I, she doesn't want anything complicated because she doesn't like it. For me, I just want to screw things up. I want things to be as simple as possible. That that baked Dijon salmon, brain dead simple. It Dijon mustard, breadcrumbs, Parmesan, and the best part, Jesus, one of these freaking things. Oh, my God. Now, I'm going to say something, and some of you are going to think I'm stupid. Have you all discovered cast iron? Holy crap, cast iron is cool. Now, granted, it's also, this is a 40-pound pan. <laughs> and that's the small portion and of it. It's the small one. If you go to the website, yourmaclifeshow.com, I've actually uh, put this up as, Jesus, oh, let me rest this on my, on my, my neck. Put, put this up as one of our Amazon picks of the week. It's the Lodge... Uh, what's the hell's name of the company? Lodge Cast? Lodge. I didn't realize. I didn't know this. They're based in Tennessee. Just south, not just, but uh, uh, southern Tennessee. The cool thing about this thing is that it's a pre-seasoned cast iron pan. 
And the preseason thing, the seasoning is always the pain in the ass part of buying a brand new cast iron thing. If you don't do it right, you can screw it up. So these come preseason, and with minimal care and minimal, minimal, uh, uh, minimal. Somebody, somebody say minimal. Mm-hmm. Minimal care. Apparently, these things will last you several lifetimes. Literally, you'll hand this down to your children because if you take care of it, cast iron lasts forever. Um, really freaking hot, really consistent heat, and you can bake in these things. This thing goes. I put the salmon in here. I put the ingredients on top of the salmon. I put this in the oven. Boom. Easy. One pot recipes. Really, really easy to use. The combination of this, this is what surprises me. The combination of this giant heavy pan along with, if you look at the website, I almost broke my wrist putting that thing down. If you look at the website, um, preseason cast iron combo cooker. So the top half of that thing, or the bottom half, depending on your point of view, is also a slow cooker, too. Look at the price. 36 bucks. 36 bucks. Pretty good. I know. You can't go wrong. It's 40 bucks. You get literally an heirloom piece of cookery. Something that's really stupidly easy to, 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 to cook with. I, w- I would encourage you to buy one of the cast iron cookbooks. And there's all kinds of cast iron cookbooks available on amazon.com and other places and look up the recipes for like one pot type things or slow cooker type things 40 bucks you get a frying pan a skillet is there a difference between a frying pan and a skillet mm-hmm. are they the same thing uh, maybe monty says me. monty says did your lodge come with a cookbook no it did not yeah, it did that book i thought that book you got this? Yeah. No, I no, I bought the cookbook. Oh, I you, thought that's you, what it came. No, did, what's in that lodge thing right there? What is it? You see it? It says lodge right there. Yeah. Yeah. So no, there's, there's there was no there was no cookbook. Uh, Monty says I have some lodge pieces that my great grandmother used. I didn't know that lodge has been around that long, eighteen <clears throat> hundreds. They still make them in the USA. So forty bucks, please get yourself one of these. Get the one. Get if there's a if there's a, a, a chef in your family, a cook in your family, uh, your sister, your mom, your brother, someone who likes to cook or wants to start learning how to cook. These things are really easy to use. Stupidly easy to use. If you go to the website yourmaclifeshow.com and the left hand side scroll down, you'll see the link to this Amazon thing. So what happens is if you buy. After you go to our website, click on the Amazon link, and then buy this cookware, we get a bit of a kickback. We get a bit of a pimp fee from Amazon. So please do that if, you, if, if you're going to buy it. Um, so this is a three-quart Dutch oven. That's the other thing I ha- can't, haven't figured out. The difference between a slow cooker, a Dutch oven. I know, what a, I know a pressure cooker is not one of those things. But is a slow cooker the same thing as a Dutch oven? Well, no, because a Dutch oven bakes things. You put it in the oven. Or a slow cooker kind of... Boils things slowly. Could you, simmers. Could it you simmers use, so in a pot. In, so you could use this as, as a slow cooker. Uh, if you put it on the stove top, yeah, I, mean, I yeah. suppose you could. Yeah, yeah, you could. Mm-hmm. Monty, I'll send you some of the recipes out of the book. Please do. Anybody, if any of y'all got any recipes at all that are simple, really easy to, to do, or one pot recipes, please send them to me. I'd, I'd love to get them. I posted up the on our Facebook page that. Um, Baked salmon recipe. I'll send it off to you guys now in the IRC chat room. Or you can go to a website. Uh, the website's called allrecipes.ca. Sorry, allrecipes.com. And do a search for baked salmon. And it's baked salmon filet Dijon. Really, really stupidly easy to make. And takes 20 minutes in total. 15 minutes in the pan. Um, five minutes to get, to get the salmon ready. Just... Do it. Try it. It's so easy. Even if you don't have cast iron, try it. It's so, so good. And you, but, but, but you don't like fish, do you? You're not a big fish fan. Not a big fish fan. That's a shame. And it's not a shame. I take it back. It's really good because it means I get to eat all of it. <laughs> I'm going to buy kilos of fish now and go, ha, it's all mine. You know, I'm, I've always been a big, a big fan of any kind of seafood, but I really like salmon. Um, but you like tuna. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love tuna. You like shrimp. Yep. 
So it's not a blanket dislike of seafood. Mm -hmm. Just you don't like salmon. Mm, I'm just not big with filleted fish. Because I worry about the bones and stuff. Plus the taste is a bit bleh. Those don't have any bones in them at all. No, if they've been filleted well. Yeah, which is what I buy. Mm Mm-hmm. I know, but uh, like I say, it's also the taste. Okay. I'm not a big fan. Monty, I've never met a shrimp I didn't like. <laughs> I've never met anything coming out of the ocean I didn't like. If it comes out of the ocean, I will eat it. Mm. Literally. I've eaten sea urchin. Have you seen what comes out of the ocean these days? Yeah, fish, poop, <laughs> f- fish pooping. It. I'm okay with that. But salmon, Atlantic salmon, Pacific salmon, lobster. Obviously, I love lobster. Crab, seal, walrus. I've had all of that. Mm-hmm. If it comes out of the ocean, I will eat it, and I will eat a lot of it. I absolutely. Kim said that F word again. Faffing around. <laughs> Faffing. No, no, stop it! Stop it! Okay. Don't don't perform on command for these people. You're not their monkey. Oh, filleted. F- f- fillet it? No, it's it's filleted. No, it's not. A fillet. It's fillet fil- it. No, it's filleted. Filleted. No, that's for posh people. <laughs> All right, folks, who's right, me or Kim? Is it filleted or filleted? So you're saying when I buy a piece of fish, yes, it's a fillet it's a of fillet. fish, yes. not a piece of fish that's been... So it's a piece of fish that's been filleted, yes. not filleted. Not flayed, F-L-A-Y-E-D. No, I know. Filleted. Filleted, yes. Filleted. Yes. No, because I don't <laughs> talk like that. So I don't talk like, I don't talk like that either, and yet I'm still saying it correctly. Are are, are you saying that you you don't believe the audience is is correct in the the manner in which they are describing this? Well, they're all North American Canadian. <laughs> and where do you live? I know, but I'm not. I'm English. So you're so you're saying that they have to. You you have to, you can't change your pronunciation. There's certain words I can't, <clears throat> and that's one of them. Change no. Well, I can't I, say can't. Okay. Naturally, I, it I doesn't could, come out properly. Hiker BC said something in the IRC chat room. What did he say? Re- repeat what he said. A fillet of fish. See. From McDonald's. But it's not. It's a fillet of fish from McDonald's. Mm. Posh. Yes. Yes. Fillet. A fillet. And Hiker BC brings up an abomination. McDonald's is offering lobster rolls this week. No, they're not. <laughs> they're offering crap on a bun this week. Is Don't. It, eat. Is it that Pollock that's no, made no, to no, be no. like lobster? Oh, no. it's certainly not the fake crab. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll give McDonald's props for that. It's not the the imitation crab meat. So it is lobster. It is in fact lobster. It's not good quality lobster, mm-hmm. and it's not good quality ingredients in the lobster roll. Much better. And, and, and Sly, you... Maybe be not good quality ingredients. Oh, because they'll use old lobster. They'll use tough lobster. They'll use pieces of lobster that you normally wouldn't wouldn't eat. Just ask just ask Sly, uh, Greg, about her lobster in New England when she was in New England. It was very funny to see her reaction to her first real lobster roll in, in New England. A true Maine lobster. Mm. His shadow said, no, they'll be Pollock. No, they won't be Pollock. They're actually our lobster. See, Monty's right. <coughs> Monty is right. The Monty's fillet right. is the piece of fish. The fillet is the act of making it into the fillet. Monty is wrong and just kissing ass. That's no, he's not. He's right. He's, no, he's that wrong. makes sense. That sounds logical. So I'm going with it. <laughs> so everyone else in the, in the room said you're wrong. Monty said you're right. So you believe Monty. <gasps> yeah, I like oh, Monty. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, that's it for tonight's show. I want to say thank you guys very much for joining us here on the show. I'm getting more used to these teeth. I can actually talk longer. We noticed. <laughs> Haters gonna hate. <clears throat> Sherry, was it a was it a Murican show? I know. Pew pew pew. Brian. Sly says, Brian, lobster rolls are awesome. McDonald's are a whole other world. I hope you mean that in a bad way, Sly. <laughs> I really, really hope you mean that in a bad way. I um, want to say thanks very much to our good friend Jim Donald from The Loop at loopinsight.com for joining us here on this show. Always appreciate it. He was busy tonight. I didn't know he was busy tonight. Otherwise, I wouldn't have called him, but thanks, Jim. Uh, again, send me an email. What are, you, what are your thoughts about 
the WWC keynote. Uh, we you got to be excited about El Capitan, if only for speed and sp- speed and stability. Uh, so some of the new features are going to be kind of cool. Uh, for you folks who own an Apple Watch, I don't. Um, does that interest you? The native apps and and that kind of stuff. I gotta I gotta believe that that will. Uh, for us OS nine users, us, us iPad users, like I said, I think it's going to have made it'll have make it'll make my iPad actually useful where it wasn't useful before. Where I've hit, where I you know my poor iPad has pretty much gone by the wayside. I'm not even using it anymore, except as a bedside alarm clock and, and, and reader. I don't take it with me anywhere anymore. Where I used to take it all the time because now that I've got the iPhone 6 Plus, I don't need the iPad. But maybe I will with the new version of iOS 9. And especially music. What are your thoughts about what both Kim and I have said about music? What are your thoughts about music the way Apple presented it? Will you be signing up for it? i got to assume you will. There's no reason why you wouldn't. It's going to be free. So all that and much more. Send me emails to onair at yourmaclifeshow.com. And please go to our website at yourmaclifeshow.com, the left-hand side of the page. Get yourself one of these lodge... Cast iron skillets. Cast iron skillets or pan. Mm-hmm. Frying pan. I don't know. I don't know the difference between frying pan and skillet. They're fun to cook in. They're Buy the little handle thing because they're freaking hot. As I've just, one thing you will learn, hopefully you won't learn the way I did, that cold cast iron looks the exact same as hot cast iron. Ow! So buy, buy buy yourself a good thing like this, but forty bucks for it for for a Dutch oven top and a and a ten inch skillet bottom. I made cornbread in this baby. I made cornbread. That's it was really good. I made cornbread in 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 a cookie. That's right. I made a, <laughs> I made a giant honking cookie. One cookie. A one ten inch cookie. Came up pretty good too. So if I can do it, you guys can do it. Send me any recipes you have, too. Any one pan or skillet or cast iron recipes, send them off to me, too. I, I, I'm loving that stuff. I'll experiment on, on Kim. Folks, until until next week, as always, she's been Kim Guy. And I've been Sean King, and you've been listening to Your Mac Life. Thanks, folks. See ya. See ya.